Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So today I have something a little bit different for you guys. I got a couple of different questions regarding my uh, die cut binder. So I thought I would show you, let me put this aside. I thought I would show you um, the issue that I was having and then give you um, an idea for from what I am currently using and what other kinds of things that you could use if you don't have what I use, okay? So if you will. <clears throat> so one of the main things that I try to do with organization is I try to use what I have, right? I don't like to, I've learned just over the years that I, I, uh, before I invest in anything, for the most part, not always, um, but I like to, if I'm going to reorganize something, I like to look at what I already have in my sash. So, so, uh, fast forward during the pandemic, right? Or, uh, rewind back to the pandemic, the start of the pandemic, I should say. Um, Janet, um, from, uh, RTS scrapbooking um, mentioned, and I believe she showed a glimpse into her um, color binders and um, how she uses it. So I I will um, definitely try to include a link to her. I think she has some organization playlists, but she goes into a lot more depth um, as to her different systems. She has systems for um, for many different things, flat embellishments, bulky embellishments. So I kind of took what she presented as content and it sparked an idea for me for primarily my issue that I was having um, uh, if you're a subscriber to my channel, um, very often during um, the uh, process videos that I film, you'll see me pull, these are my color bins, so I can do a different, uh, <laughs> I can do a different um, video regarding the color bins, but here's the issue that I was having. I keep pretty much any non-themed um embellishments in here i will say the probably the only things i do have like some other categories like um my bulky embellishments that don't really have a theme i keep those separately but i keep them together um but you will see that there's bulk in here so these are like strays that i've I've gone ahead and used up primarily from older collections, older kits and things like that, that because they're color coded, I, I tend to scrap more in color. I've kind of kept them together so that if I know that I'm going to reach for something in, um, this is, this happens to be the black and gray color bin. Yep. And, um, so I, if I need something that color, and whether it's flat, um, you know, if it's something like a tab that I need, or if it's something bulky, uh, like a brad or something like that, I have lots of things in here to choose from. So imagine back in 2020, I had, this was my black and gray bin. Um, these enamel dots were loose and all over the place before I put them on cardstock. I have quite a few of these. Um, these are CD uh, covers. They're paper. I bought them at one of our local warehouse clubs like probably a decade ago at this point. Um, so I have plenty, plenty of these. I had plenty of these in my stash. So for my um, color die cuts that didn't have a theme, that I didn't want to keep in collections or by manufacturer, I was keeping them in these in these um, CD 
uh, envelopes and they would go in here, okay? And so I had an envelope of die cuts ready to go. I also had um, my, my labels that are now in these. I had my labels in here in the same um, type of envelopes. And you can imagine the bulk that this created once you see what's actually in my binders. So one of the things that I ended up doing is I ended up after watching Janet's video, it sparked an idea for me and I took those two envelopes and was trying to think of what could work. Here is where this is a old postbound album. It has many, many, many sheets. You see here, this is the side. Here's the side view of it. And it was just sitting there. I had originally used this for uh, back uh, many, many years ago. Had started to use this as a travel um, a travel scrapbook. So this had all kinds of uh, layouts over the years of my travels. Um, I still enjoy the travel, but one thing that I started noticing is that the um, having those layouts be in a postbound album um, created a whole lot of bulk. And so what ended up happening is that the album slowly, if this is the, um, the binding here, they started to just bulk up and it would like, it no longer closed like this. It all was like, the more I put in there, the worst it got in terms of, um, how it expanded. So I decided to take those layouts out. I, I, I did move into uh, D-Ring albums um, and that was a whole, that was a whole nother conversation of trying to convert, right? Some of the postbound to uh, D-Ring in terms of, uh, particularly if um, you're shifting from um, theme-based scrapbooking to what I did was, which was try to um, uh, separate them by chronology. But anyway, that's a different subject. So fast forward, here I am with this empty postbound album and I decided to go ahead and start with um, my black and gray bin, right? So I took everything from the, um, the uh, CD envelopes I went ahead and let me just see what I have here. You don't have to use this. Um, I This is the tape runner that I use. Um, it's a repositionable. So I would highly encourage if you're gonna move to something like this, repositionable um, is uh, probably the way to go. Um, other people use um, the, the squares, you know, old school, if you've been scrapbooking for a long time, they sell the actual, like the squares and the big roll. They're flat and they're two-sided adhesive, but they come in very small squares. I am not, uh, I don't use those, so I don't have any of those to show you. But um, if you're familiar with them, that's another, it's another option. So you, what you want here is something with low tack. And I'll tell you why, because I've made this mistake and I can kind of walk you through it. So here is the album, right? And so I was running out of space, as I've mentioned in this, because of the bulk of what was in here, in these envelopes. And so I decided to go ahead and um, Janet talks about, um, she uses, her system is that she uses um, notebooks or, or actual binders, and she will actually, um, uh, you know, do the, um, the holes to be able to put them in the binder. If she's using the notebook option, then 
she, what she does, I just pulled any old notebook from my stash. Here, let me just move this. What she does is she goes ahead and adheres um, wax paper um, and will adhere it to the paper. So that way she can reuse this page over and over. She glues, she uses a wet glue. She uses the blue mono, the Tombow mono glue to glue this, uh, you know, obviously cut to size of your sheet of your paper and then she adheres this and then it's ready to go. She um, she will do the, I believe she does the front and the back. Um, she does it, but you know, she um, for the most part, um, you know, will um, we'll do these in a batch, okay? So I was too lazy for that. <laughs> so, this is where you find me with my, my system. This is what works for me and I'm happy with it. So I took, I probably should back up here and just flip to this so I don't hit the camera. Try to find an empty page so that I can kind of show you. Is there an empty page? There has to be an empty page. Okay, there we go. So this is what the page, sorry for the glare. But this is what the page will look like, right? So this particular album already came with the cardstock in here. Um, so I didn't do anything. This is how the album looked when I first grabbed my um, first envelope full of um, the color, uh, you know, my color uh, die cuts and my... my um, Kind of my cutoffs, anything that I was no longer going to use on uh, keep intact or together, or there was only like maybe one sticker or something to that effect. Okay. So then imagine I'm sitting there and I do the first page, right? So here, here is the grays. So these are all of the little die cuts. Here are some stickers. I can tell these are stickers little crowns. I don't know if I'll ever use them. They've been in here for a long time. But as opposed to being in here, so what I had to do with the ones in here, dump them all out, sort through them every single time I wanted to use these. The ease of this is that in a flip of a page, you can see what you have all at once. They're spread out already for you. And the ease of this is that you can quickly just pull them off. This this was there from before. This is not from this, which I don't care. Like if this gets damaged, I'm not going to really care. Again, that was there from before. You can see it's like I, I used, I think I probably used that dot runner. And there you go. So there's little pieces. There's bigger pieces. And... If I punch things, like these are punched out of uh, just pattern paper, they go in here. Very easy for me to be able to use. When I start seeing empty spaces, I will a lot of times go, go back here if I know that the areas uh, in the pages that I have are kind of full. I'll just go ahead and just put them at the bottom of my bins and it's fine. Um, so when I start to see empty, empty, empty spaces, I will go back to the bin and see if there's anything I can put on here. This system has worked so well for me. I just, I can't even tell you enough. I will tell you about a couple of different things that have helped me and things that like, if I had to do all over again, I would probably, uh, modify slightly. So one of the things that really helped me um, to solve an issue that I was having is that I used these labels here to be able to tell me at a quick reference where the colors are. And I'll tell you why. Because I started doing this, like I told you, I was just sitting watching TV. I didn't think this completely through as I was doing it. Because the grays, you'll see, I only gave myself this three pages. Well, not really, because this starts going into black. So 
I should have, what I should have done is allotted myself a couple of more pages for the gray because you'll see, I can grab it quickly. I think that was it. Mm, yep. Yeah. So I have an overabundance of gray and they go over here too. So if I had to do over again, I would allow myself instead of probably giving myself only like two, even three, maybe I would um, really try to think about, um, you know, how much of each color that I have. Minimally, I probably would have given myself either two, two or three, um, uh, what am I saying? Uh, three or maybe even four, like double-sided papers, just so that I had enough room to grow. So you'll start to see, so this is the black. Again, it's very color coded because that's just what I do. And that's how I scrap when I'm not scrapping by theme. Even when I'm scrapping by theme, if I just need a pop of color, it's just, that's just how my brain works. So here you see the same thing, but again, I still haven't caught on, right? I gave myself only this, this, and then this side for the black. And so, let me back here somewhere. Is the additional, is the additional black, which is why these come in handy. Now, I will tell you, initially, I bought these because this is how I organized my uh, my collection. So I already had these in my stash. I was not worried about using them. They're uh, Avery. Um, uh, they're, the manufacturer is by Avery, but I will tell you, um, the Dollar Tree, if you have one near you, also sells these um, in uh, packs of like, they're like, um, packs of like three bunches. Um, they are not as sturdy as the Avery, but let me tell you, in a pinch, hey, they work pretty, pretty good. So it's easy for me to look through here for particularly for the ones. Now I have had this system, like I said, since 2020. So I've been using them close to two years. The system I have created here, I know for the most part that each of the categories has a section back here. So I don't mind just um, if I've gone through the blacks, don't find what I need here. I don't mind just kind of flipping like this. And I know that the color, the other black section is back here. But quick reference, it also ha helps me to have the tabs here. Again, it's all about using what I have. So this is just how I do it, right? You could very much so modify this for your own needs. So if you have, um, if you have certain collection of die cuts that you keep together. These are Jen Hadfield. The majority I think are Jen Hadfield. If I wanted to, and I wanted to take like a big section, maybe not that big, but a big section and just put all of my Jen Hadfield. This is what Janet does with some of her, some of her notebooks and things. She will put um, her some of her designers together. So you could also adhere these here like this. Um, so I keep I keep some of my die cuts together because I know that I can use they're very versatile and I can use them with multiple collections of some of my favorite designers. Jen Hatfield is one. Maggie Holmes is another. Um, I think I have one of uh, Maggie Holmes. Um, I think I have another uh, Pink Paisley one. Like a lot of the Paige Evan ones are in there. So you could do the same thing, right? Or you could do a smaller notebook if you wanted to for those smaller collections, right? So that if you were going to be playing with uh, a lot of Maggie Home collections, then you could put all of them, you know, on your papers and then know that this notebook is all your Maggie Homes. It's another, it's another option. What I will caution you is that when I started doing this, let's see if I can 
show you a great example. Oh, I think I know. Uh, are they here anymore? Hmm. Maybe not. I think I removed them in one of the last layouts. <laughs> I pulled it up. Um, give me a second here. And this may have this may have some. I'm trying to see if I find any, but I'll talk it through as I'm as I'm flipping through here. That might be a little bit better. I can find it. So you can imagine, right? I was doing a little bit at a time, not to overwhelm myself. See, I was smart with these. So one of the things I also had in my color bins were these um were stickers and these i did go ahead and keep on their backing so you will see that they have uh the backing and i just did the one little tiny strip there to be able to put it in my binder but i will tell you when you adhere stickers to like this i don't know if I don't think it has this same situation with um, the wax paper, but I will caution you about using these page protectors the way I did with stickers that are not backed in their original like sticker backing, like these again, is that um, depending on how tacky they are, they may stick to your, um, they may stick to the page quite a bit. And... Um, I'm not, yeah, all of these are die cuts. I'm trying to find a good example. These are not good examples. Um, <laughs> oh, this one. Um, I didn't do a lot of them, uh, which is probably why I'm having a hard time finding them, but I did do enough of them to learn my lesson. I learned that I needed to keep the backing on here. I, I should also mention that they they do make um they do make cop composition like notebooks that already have like the shininess that the sticker backs do um but um i know people use those as well i just have either never seen them or never picked them up again i was trying to just use stuff that i had in my stash um, so if you're going to do something like this, again, I would caution you, if you're going to put stickers in here, definitely place them in here with the backing. So see, this is a perfect example. I kept the backing on, um, put a couple of, um, things of adhesive on there and we're good to go. E, it comes off like perfect. No issues at all whatsoever. Doesn't even leave any residue behind for the most part. It depends. You have to experiment with the adhesive. I find that the dot ones um, do a little bit better. And you don't, again, you don't need a lot um, of it. Here's some. <laughs> um, normally, these like really sticky spots, I will go ahead and cover up with some wax paper. And then they don't, they don't stick to anything. Um, I just haven't done it. It doesn't bother me. Sorry for the noise though. Um, let me see if there's, I don't think there's any stickers. Oh, these are stickers. I haven't had to use them. Yeah, they're, they're you see, they're really stuck. I like gotta be really careful uh, taking them off. Oh, well, it did come off, but um, I guess I should use those soon. <laughs> I just haven't had a need for that word in brown, I guess. Um, so, so yeah, there's there's that. I hope that helps you if you are interested in converting to something like this. If you're having the same kind of storage issues, I'll tell you, I've never used my die cuts as much as I have. Like sometimes I find certain sections are really lacking and stuff and I have to go back into my stash um, to replenish my binder. So that's how I know that my system is one is working and it is um, functioning the way I intended it to function. So um, what you have here is the majority of stuff are not, uh, this is washi tape, so that's not a die cut. Um, but usually when I, when I have extra 
something extra, I will go ahead and just throw it in here. Like this would be one of the ones that probably would go into the grays the next time I needed to replenish. Uh, and anything like that that I'm using up. Um, all right, guys. So I hope that helps you. Um, this, uh, in case you're interested, this is a dot runner by uh, Kokuyo. It is a dot liner. It's the long. Um, I bought, I buy them on Amazon and uh, just buy the refills. Uh, I don't use it a lot. This is not my primary, but I'm telling you, it lasts a really, really long time. It is not your average dot runner. It, you can see it is quite large. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Um, my primary uh, adhesive is usually this. So this was something I bought mostly to do pocket pages because I do do a lot of pocket pages um, and things like that. So this is uh, an alternative, but any dot runner will, will do for sure. Um, so thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope to bring you the next video. If there's any interest in me showing you um, my color bins um, or if you have any other organizational questions, please just let me know in the comments below. Thank you all. Bye.